go ahead and get started. We have a couple of more folks we're waiting on, but we will um, go ahead and kick it off. Thank you so much for coming tonight. I think this is a wonderful uh, way to connect our alumni and current students and seeing what they're doing and all the hard work um, they're putting into the current organizations that they are uh, leaders of. Um, so my name is Erin Hutchins. I'm the Inclusion and Diversity Coordinator for the Office of Alumni Affairs. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce Alexis Davis, who is a coordinator for student organizations and student involvement and the advisor to BSU. And Alexis, thank you so much for doing this tonight. And thank you so much for all you do for our students. And I'm turning it over to you. Well, hi everyone. Thank y'all for joining us so much. We're so excited. So what we'll do is we'll get, um, we'll have our panel introduce themselves and then we'll get into some questions. And so during this panel, if y'all have any questions, please use the chat feature. But we also like to see your beautiful faces. So if you want, you can turn on your camera. Thank you, Sasha. I just see, I see you now. Hey, but yes, turn on your camera if you like. And you can also speak verbally, whichever is your choice. But yeah, so we'll go ahead and start with Ada Ruth. Regal, y'all. I'm so excited to be a part of this panel tonight as a part of Black Alumni Week. I'm used to going to this with my parents on the weekends around a football game, so I hate it's not under normal circumstances, but still excited to get to join y'all tonight. Uh, but for those of you that I haven't had the chance to meet, my name is Adri Huntley, and I have the honor and privilege of serving this year as our SGA president. Um, I'm a senior studying global studies with a minor in hunger studies in the College of Human Sciences, and I am from Clanton, Alabama, and the child of not one, but two Auburn alumni, um, Liz Liz Huntley and Tony Huntley. So excited to be with y'all tonight. Yes, um, like Ada Ruth said, it definitely is an honor to be here tonight and serve on this great panel. Um, but my name is Jalen Sanders and this year I have the pleasure of serving as VSU's president. And um, I'm a senior from Bessemer, Alabama, majoring in industrial and systems engineering. Perfect, thank you. Alrighty, where you go, y'all? My name is Adia Foster. I am a junior from Montgomery, Alabama, and I'm studying software engineering. And this year, I have the pleasure of serving as the president for the National Society of Black Engineers. And I'm so excited to be here. And like Adrian said, I am the parent. I am the child of two Auburn alumni. So, but they are not as cool as Ada's parents. They do not show up at any of these events whatsoever. They are virtual, and they still haven't graced us with their presence. Um, but they are alumni of the wonderful University of Auburn, Auburn University. Adia, I don't know if we need to call them cool. I feel like that's a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank y'all. So our first question for the evening is tell us about your experience as a student leader at Auburn, more particularly a black student leader. So if you want to go in that same order or y'all can popcorn around, whichever y'all choose. Sure. So my experience being a student leader at Auburn has been all over the map. Um, I've had the opportunity to be involved in so many different spaces and I've been very privileged in doing so. I've been involved with Student Government Association, Black Student Union, Camp War Eagle, Student Recruiters, Undergraduate Research, Study Abroad, the Honors College, um, you name it. I've probably touched it in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Um, and I like to say, you know, I major in involvement and I kind of do school um, because I really just enjoy that aspect of my Auburn experience so much more. Sorry to my parents who were on this call. Um, but it's it's been incredibly transformative for me um, as a student leader, but also as um, who is soon to be an Auburn alum going out into the workforce, knowing that these experiences are going to have shaped me into the leader that I am today. And I know that I'm going to be so well prepared because of the experiences and the skills that student involvement has blessed me with. Um, being a black student leader has definitely come with its challenges. I know we have some questions to dive into that a little bit more, but have definitely been blessed in finding my tribe and so many different student leaders. Um, that were black as well, um, or that are black as well, um, to be able to lean on, get advice from, get poured into, but also pour into them um, and just relate to their experiences. So I've been very blessed to have some incredible people that I've had to lean on to. Yes, and I would like to echo that. Um, a lot of what Ada Ruth talked on, um, kind of can parallel with myself as well. Um, I'm, I've been very heavily involved on campus since my freshman year as well. Um, like Ada Ruth, we both started on BSU's freshman committee and have since then blossomed into these great leaders that you see before you today. But um, honestly, my experience as a student leader has been one that I will cherish for the rest of my life. 
Um, I've enjoyed my time here at Auburn, especially getting to know not only the Black Students Auburn, but also the campus, the full campus environment, and seeing not only um, the impact that I'm making personally, but also on a grand scale. Um, I've served as a resident assistant most recently this past year for universities housing. I've served as um, on the committee level as well as on the executive board level for the National Society of Black Engineers. I've served in almost every capacity in the Black Student Union. Um, so let's just say BSU is definitely my home. Um, but as a Black student leader, like Ada Ruth said, um, this definitely has come with some challenges. Um, there's a small community of Black students at Auburn, but I think that we know how um, we know how to find each other and have the best and most optimal experiences together. Um, so I have not but done as much like campus-wide stuff. Um, kind of a I don't know. It's my little 18-year-old self mindset was. I'm coming to Auburn. Um, I don't know how many people know, but my sister Zuri, um, she was heavily involved with BSU, Black Student Union, and we went to a small private school growing up. So it was I was always Zuri's little sister, whatever. Like the teachers all knew Zuri first, so I was always compared to Zuri, whether that was good or bad. Um, now I'm like thankful that I was compared to Zuri because like she's amazing. But when I was 18, I was like I'm ready to be a Dia, like. I'm ready to walk into a room and it's like, what is your name, Adia? Not, oh, you're Zuri's sister, which I mean, now I love being Zuri's sister. I claim Zuri's sister all the time. Um, but when I was 18, that was something I very much craved. So I kind of found my area within my college, within the College of Engineering. And I've done pretty much everything um, within the College of Engineering. Um, it's, I, I'm kind of at the point where like, I can walk into like engineering spaces. And I saw a mom that the other day and I was like, I can kind of, tell them what I want to do which is like a really weird space but it's also like super empowering to know that like I've grown these relationships as a student leader to where I can kind of like they know they can count on me and I can kind of say oh I think I'd like to do that kind of thing um and it's super fun but like it does come with challenges um and I know that's like one thing we all work through but like Jalen said we do we just always having to find each other um and no matter where we are on campus you're going to run into some other black students who are either in your org or not in your org and y'all get together and you just have fun and kind of like are there for each other and when somebody needs like a hey keep going you can look around and you can find somebody and it's like hey keep going keep pushing whatever you can achieve whatever you'd like to achieve kind of thing so it definitely has its benefits of being a student leader but it's not come without challenges whatsoever yeah, and I know some of y'all talked about your experience, can, but can you can you elaborate on your experience as a student leader within your organization? Yeah, so I started in SGA right from the jump. Um, so I got involved in Freshman Forum, um, which was incredibly transformative for me. For those of you who aren't familiar with Freshman Forum, it's a group of about 45 freshman students who are selected to represent the freshman class and Student Government Association. And so we're taken through various leadership exercises paired with a mentor within SGA, but also get to form relationships with the people in our group. Um, and those relationships have carried on with me to this day. Um, um, I see Sasha and Ellie on the call who I was in freshman forum with. I've had roommates in that I was in freshman forum with. My campaign manager and my best friend was in freshman forum with me. Um, so those relationships and that experience truly stuck with me. Um, from then I decided, you know what, I really want to be in a position in SGA. So I'm going to run for a senator position. Um, so that spring I ran to represent the um, one Senate seat for the College of Human Sciences against five people and for whatever crazy reason they elected me to serve that year um, and then again the next year as an incumbent um, and in those two years I had the opportunity to serve as the inclusion and diversity committee chairperson in student senate and the next year served as president pro tem four so I was second in command to the vice president of SGA um, and obviously back in the spring I um, ran for SGA president and for whatever crazy reason the student body decided to elect me into this office um, so incredibly happy to serve in this role, incredibly honored to serve in this role, and just thankful for SGA from beginning to now um, for supporting me, making me a better leader, um, and encouraging me to grow. Yes, and um, I've actually cherished my experiences within the Black Student Union. Um, I like to say it's my home because honestly, everyone knows me as Jalen from BSU, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but everyone knows me, and I guess, um, 
going back to my freshman year when I was coming to Auburn, I was looking for an organization that would be my family away from my actual family. And BSU was just that. So I started on freshman committee, like I said, and it was kind of getting your feet wet with, with organizations on a college level. I had been involved in, in high school, of course, but seeing it maximized to the, such a um, high capacity level, it was like, whoa, okay. So, okay, this is how an event would run on a college campus, not just within a high school senior class. So it was definitely um, insightful in some ways, as well as molding you as a strong leader generally. So not just giving you those skills, but also giving you the ability to exert and use those skills. Um, so coming towards the spring semester when CAD applications out, came out in BSU, um, I think everyone kind of knew I was going to apply for cabinet. Um, so it was it was dead giveaway. So since 2018, um, I, when I pursued cabinet, I got on. I was the assistant director of one of our event planning committees. And I hosted two of our most staple, um, most famous staple events, Fall Forum in the fall and then Soul Food Bazaar. And I got to tell you about Soul Food Bazaar. I don't know um, if you ever attended a Soul Food Bazaar, but it's always a great time. It's a family reunion mixed with a block party, mixed with a, who a house party. It's just a great time all around. And I had the privilege and honor of hosting it and planning it. So that was very um, awarding, as well as going into that spring when I applied for for exec and some things were changing in the org. We restructured ourselves, but um, I had I took on the challenge um, and implemented some new things, and it got me to this point where I now am president. So I very much cherish all of that. I've grown not only as a leader but personally as well, um, and I've established some great friendships that I would cherish not only at Auburn but past Auburn as well. Um, so I guess like how I got involved with Nesby um, was probably, I don't know, it's also my very 18 year old mind was very questionable, but um, led me down the right path. Um, so both my parents graduated from Auburn, they're both engineers, and they met at kind of like met for the first time at the fall regional conference for Nesby. Um, and it just happened like I don't know. They both went to Auburn, but they hadn't even met each other on ca Auburn's campus. So that's kind of how, like, I started getting involved in Nesby. I was like, oh, let me go to Fall Regional Conference my freshman year, and, like, I'll find a boyfriend, whatever. Didn't happen. Um, but that was my mindset at the time. But now it's like, oh, my gosh, like, just going, stepping that far out of my comfort zone. Um, and that was not, like, by myself. I know Dr. Brown, um, he's the director of the Academic Excellence Program, she has definitely like hand on the back pushed me out of my comfort zone so many times um and so she was one of those that definitely encouraged me to go to frc for actually like the real reason which is like finding networking and all of that um and just kind of like working with her she's probably one of those that one of the people that's definitely grown me the most as a leader on auburn's campus um because she just kind of like there was i think it was like during Summer Bridge was like my freshman year. Um, I was talking to Vontae Richmond, um, and he was basically talking about how Dr. Brown volunteers you to do stuff. Um, and so I was like, okay, whatever. And that's kind of how it started. It was like, Dr. Brown was like, hey, D, you really should do this. Hey, D, you really should do that. And it just kind of like taught me to like grow my own voice and learn how to advocate for myself, but then also learn how to advocate for my peers who like don't always end up in the rooms. Um, and so I've been super fortunate to like end up in all of these rooms where I've been alumni advisory council for academic excellence, the engineering inclusion diversity committee, just like lots of different rooms that like I would have never thought that in three years I would be in those rooms like constantly where it's like, how many meetings do I have today kind of thing. Um, and I definitely think that Dr. Brown and just like all of the people older than me have definitely contributed to that and definitely like pushed me to become Nesby president because I honestly like I was terrified of running for absolutely anything I was like I'm gonna lose nobody likes me whatever so to like honestly get to this point it's like a very big growth mindset for me thing and that's kind of one of the things that I like to 
I don't know. It's like one of those things where it's like so many people poured into me that I kind of like, okay, now it's time for me to start pouring to somebody else because like I'm leaving in a year and a half, which is absolutely insane to think about. Um, but just kind of like, I guess that's just how I got involved with like student leadership and kind of like my experience so far. Thank y'all. Y'all have really great responses. I wish I was like that didn't undergrad because I was just at my house, like not doing anything. <laughs> but we've come a long way, just to say the least. Okay, so my next question is, what would you tell other students who want to become involved but are kind of nervous? I would say to do exactly what I did, and that's just to dive right in. Um, I kind of called myself freshman year the yes girl, because if anybody asked me to do anything, I was like, Yes. Um, Ada, are you going to serve on this committee? Yes. Ada, are you going to run for this? Yes. I just really wanted to get a wide array of experiences so that I could start to, you know, as the years go by, tailor down exactly what it was I really wanted to invest in. Um, obviously, that thing became SGA, but um, as a result of all of those different experiences, I have grown so much and had the opportunity to meet so many incredible people who I wouldn't have met had I just done SGA, you know? Um, so I would just encourage them to branch out as far and wide as they can. Um, just dive right in because I promise people want to see you in those spaces. They want to help you and don't be afraid to ask for help because so many of us had to to get where we are today. Yes, and in addition to what Ada just said, I would say don't be afraid to break outside of your comfort zones. I know a lot of times we get um, so complacent in what our current state is to where we, anything outside of that is taboo to us. So, um, if you're looking to get involved, don't be afraid to try new things with that involvement. Um, if usually, you know, you take more of like a, just a general group member, try to go for that leadership position. Now, that does not mean go for the tip top position um, because time management also does come into play. Um, but with that breaking outside of my comfort zone, using myself as an example, I never would have thought some of the things that I've experienced would have happened, especially um, with so much growth coming from it. Um, one example I can say is leadership. I had the opportunity to go to leadership this past summer, 2019, and you all, it was so eye-opening. Um, the idea that I thought a leader was um, prior to leadership, um, I got a chance to actually break what leadership is, break it down, break it down to the simplest form, and then building it back up and seeing the different forms of it. A leader does not mean always being at the top, always giving instructions. Sometimes a leader is actually sitting back, just observing. So having those different kind of leaders, but all being one in the same, sharing similarities, I got a chance to actually see, okay, okay, I get you now. But yes, definitely step outside of your comfort zone and don't be afraid to. Sometimes it's going to feel a little weird, trust me, you know, ooh. But please, guys, you I promise you, you're going to be supported and it's going to be rewarding on the other side. Um, so I guess mine is pretty much basically what Jalen and Ada said. I, I know I was definitely one of those that was just like stand in the back and look. Um, and so I definitely had to take on the role of the yes man. Um, that was one of the things or well, I guess yes woman in this case. Um, that was definitely one of the things that got me furthest outside of my comfort zone. Um, I was one of those that was like my comfort zone's right here. And the furthest I'll go is like right here, but it's like, you gotta get out further. You gotta talk to people. Um, I think my first, I know first semester, probably first whole year, I really didn't talk to anybody. I went to class, went home. I went to Nesby meetings. I sat in the back, went back home and I really just didn't socialize. And once I was finally like, okay, these people kind of like, and people would like talk to me and I went talk back. And it was just like, I was like, why are they talking to me? I'm just some weird freshman, whatever. But that's, like, so far from the truth. It's, like, everybody, like, wants to get to know you. Um, and once I was finally, like, okay, these people actually want to get to know me, I should probably say more than, hey, okay, I'm good, whatever, and, like, get to know them, kind of, like, actually talk and, like, be myself. Um, and so once I kind of did that, then it was just, it, like, involvement just kind of opened up and was so much bigger um, or, like, there was so much more to it. So, and then, like, I guess the other thing I was thinking was, like, if you know you're the kind that will like say yes too many times, cause like you know how you are. Like if you're in your comfort zone, if you're like, like to see your comfort zone, yes man is kind of the way to go. If you're one of those that's like, I do absolutely everything except for school. Um, my, like one advice that I would, I was doing when I was doing Camp Regal this summer was to find, go to as many general body meetings, events as you want, go to all of them. 
but don't get involved like in a higher role, whether that's a committee or whatever, except for in like one or two organizations just to get started. Um, and like after your first year, then it's like, I don't really like that one. I like that one more and just kind of adjust which ones you want to be like, go higher up in the leadership ranks for. Um, but you just kind of have to like know yourself. So like, if you know you do too much and you don't really focus on school, then try to stick to a couple. If you're one of those, it's like, here's my comfort zone and I'm not stepping out of it. You just got to say yes a whole bunch of times and then you'll be outside of your comfort zone and you'll be thriving. Thank y'all. So I do have one question from the audience, but I want to remind everyone that please use the chat feature or you can talk to us. We're here. We're people. We love to talk, as you can tell. <laughs> but yes, please use the chat or talk to us if you have any questions for our student leaders. But our first question is, what advice do you have I'm oh, sorry, I can't read. What advice do the student leaders have towards finding and sustaining relationships with faculty and staff mentors? Um, I guess I can go first. Um, I would honestly just say like, you just have to reach out. Um, there are so many faculty and staff members who sit in their office during their mandatory office hours, like the university required office hours, and nobody really comes to talk to them. If they do come talk to them, it's just questions about the homework, the project, the test. Um, and so professors just, in my experience, like faculty and professors, they love to just, you come and sit down and it's like, hey, like the research, that's the easiest way to get a professor talking is, hey, what are you researching? And within the College of Engineering, you're, they're just gone. And it's a long conversation and you probably don't know what they're talking about because it's such a high level because they're all so smart. But that right there just kind of like gets you in the door and it's like, okay, this student wants to know more. This student wants a relationship and you just kind of like start there. And it's also, it just goes back to like putting yourself out there, getting, just walking up and talking to them. Um, and I know for me, the longest conversations I've had is like, so I was looking at, I heard you talk about this part of your research. And then it's just like, they just get going and going and going and you learn a lot and they love interacting with students um and so it's really just gonna have to be proactive um with going to them emailing them whatever it is just get in touch with them and i have never really been turned down by a professor that's like oh i don't want to talk to you right now whatever they're all super like they'll drop drop the hat and talk to you about whatever they're working on or whatever so just be proactive and go talk to them yes and to even take that a little bit further, um, Adia did bring up a good point. I feel like a lot of times we do place like our like faculty and educators on a pedestal. And yes, they do deserve to be on that. But we kind of distance ourselves from that pedestal to the point where even interacting with them outside of a class setting is so weird and taboo. Um, so I do think, like Adia said, just going up to them and talking to them, talking about like, what's your favorite sport? Um, how do you feel about this topic? Like simple things like that will open the door for a greater connection. And then that's where you can be like, well, I really admire these characteristics about you and I would like for you to be my mentor. And that's up to them if they want to accept it because I, I do believe they are a little busy, but um, having that continued kind of relationship, just checking on each other and being open and honest in your communication um saying that you know i would like your advice or your feedback on this um because like they like adia said we do like to talk and so they like to talk um probably even a little more um so just opening that door is going to create a world of possibilities you never would have known if you had not taken the opportunity to connect with them absolutely i mean i have to echo everything that they said it, it truly just takes reaching out and i'll speak more from the staff side since that's how i interact with more because like i said unfortunately do not prioritize school as much as my involvement in a lot of cases. Um, but I do have the opportunity in this role to interact with a lot of staff, but I really took that initiative from the time I was a freshman. Um, and I'll use a personal example, and I don't know if she's on the call, but um, Dr. Taffy Clayton has served as an incredible mentor for me. Um, ever since my freshman year, I think we met at an event and um, I you know, made the initiative. I was like, I would really love to just get lunch or coffee soon and just pick your brain. Um, and that has been a very sustainable, continued relationship and support 
supportive relationship for me. Um, she's helped guide me throughout different leadership positions. We did a lot of work together when I was inclusion, diversity, and equity committee chairperson in student senate. Um, she has been absolutely incredible um, for me. Um, and even when as far as to write my recommendation letter for our sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Um, so really, really thankful to have that relationship with her. And I have a similar relationship with a lot of other staff members, but it truly just took reaching out. Um, I like, I heard from an administrator one time, they said, you know, we could be anywhere doing these jobs. Dr. Clayton could be a chief diversity officer anywhere. We could have general counsels anywhere, um, but they choose a higher education institution for a reason, right? Like they want to be here for a reason and they want to interact and invest in students. So it truly just takes reaching out because they have, I wouldn't say they have all the time in the world, that's probably a little bit of a stretch, but they definitely do have time dedicated and want to invest in relationships with students because they are here for a purpose. Thank y'all. Does anyone from our audience have any additional questions? If not, I can keep going with my list, don't worry. Anybody? Okay, well, we'll wait on them. So I have a kind of fun question. What is your favorite event hosted by your organization or what is the most memorable, memorable experience you've had at Auburn so far? Honestly, you can take both. It's up to y'all. <laughs> I will take both. Okay. Um, so my favorite event by far that SJ puts on is Heyday. Um, so every alumni, every student on this call, everyone knows what Heyday is. Um, Heyday is coming up in a couple of weeks and we are so, so thrilled. Um, I'm really excited to have my first and I guess only Heyday as SGA president. Um, but y'all love Heyday so much. One year was actually on my birthday and I volunteered not one, not two, but three hours at a tent passing out name tags on my birthday just because I love Heyday so much. I love the connection that it brings to various members of the Auburn family and there were even some people I volunteered with that day that I'm still friends with now. Um, so you never know who you're going to meet. Um, love getting a hay dog, love going to see the camels. Um, I don't know all the details yet of what it's going to look like virtually this year, but I know our team has awesome plans to still make it a really engaging event. Um, and probably my most memorable experience while here at Auburn, um, I had the opportunity sophomore year to study abroad. Um, so I participated in the Honors College Study and Travel Program um, where I learn about a country throughout a semester and then I take a 10 day trip to that country. And so I had the opportunity sophomore year to go to India. Um, it was absolutely incredible and life changing for me. Um, it eventually catapulted me into changing my major because I was so impacted by the trip and what I was able to see, um, but made some awesome friendships, got to eat some incredible Indian food, um, and get to see a part of the world that I probably wouldn't have had the opportunity to see had it not been for that program. Um, so I would tell every single student I meet, if you have the opportunity to study abroad, please go because it is going to change your life. But um, that is by far probably the most memorable and impactful thing I've done. And I might sound a little biased about this, but my favorite event, and it's very hard for me to choose y'all, but my favorite event from BSU has got to be Soul Food Bazaar. Um, if you was on freshman committee, also known as Soul Food Bazaar, um, <laughs> that's an inside joke, but yes, um, Soul Food Bazaar is my favorite event because not only, first of all, I love Soul Food, um, not only does it combine that love for soul food, but it also brings in the historical context of soul food and why it's so significant within the Black community. Um, aside from that um, educational part, we also have a great time at Soul Food Bazaar. We eat good, we learn, and then we have a great time. We dance. Um, sometimes we've done karaoke at a, um, Soul Food Bazaar. We might play um, a family feud or some kind of group game. So it's very inclusive and in a family-oriented way. Um, now, my most memorable moment is, I'm a little torn between the two. Um, aside from leadership, I would say this past year, just um, being a junior, serving as not only um, VP of programs in the Black Student Union, but programs chair in National Society of Black Engineers, as well as a resident assistant. Those are three major positions, um, all heavily um, active on their own, but combined, it created a sense of impactfulness, not only on myself, but from me unto these other students. So I really did enjoy that. Um, now, some days I only had about two hours of sleep, but um, with the, the little sleep that I did have, it energized me enough to sustain myself throughout that day or that week. Um, but it really did bring a smile to my face to see so many students having a great time at these events, so many great students building a community and connecting 
with one another through these events that I was responsible for planning. So I think that will have to be my most memorable moment or experience thus far at Auburn. Um, so my favorite event that Nesby puts on would definitely be Black Girls Rock. Um, it's a wonderful night. Um, probably my favorite part would definitely be everybody dressing up to the tees, just like everything. And I mean, just outfits that everybody's come in and just like, I like, wow, how do you, where do you even find that fabric to make that suit jacket kind of thing? Um, but it's just like a great night and we, it's so fancy. It's just like everything. It's like the gala experience and we also get to recognize all of the wonderful black women around our community within the college, within Auburn, within Opelika, the area um, as a whole. Um, that's probably my favorite one that we put on. The favorite one that we do like as a chapter would definitely be the, our conferences. Um, just seeing that many black engineers walking around head to toe, business professional is just like, it's so empowering. Um, I did that as a freshman and it was like, wow. Um, that's probably like the two, like the event wise. And then most impactful thing is definitely been, I would probably say E-Day um, this past spring. We actually got it in before, um, before COVID. Um, and I work as a student worker within the K-12 outreach office, which also does like scholarships and recruiting. Um, and within those, it was just like, so I was working the whole day. Um, I actually got in trouble with my boss because I skipped one of my classes to stay at work because I was having such a good time. Um, and I was just there and I was like seeing all of these high schoolers just so excited to learn about engineering, learn about Auburn um, and just like seeing them, like they just come running and it was like, oh my gosh, we have another school bus coming. And you just see the kids in like a huge pack just come walking up the concourse. I think absolutely everybody on campus hates E-Day um, because you cannot get food. I didn't try to eat, you cannot get food. Because a lot of the teachers, because I was checking in the school group, so the teachers are like, you cannot cross this road, which is Magnolia, where all of the other restaurants are besides campus. So they had to eat on campus. And so I think absolutely everybody hates e -Day, but I don't try to go around anywhere except for the engineering concourse. And it's fun, like, working it and, like, seeing all of these students so excited about Auburn and about engineering. Um, it's just, like, super fun to me. I don't know. I guess it's, like, the nerd in me. But just, like, all the different outreach events that, like, I attended before I came to Auburn and now I'm like working on the other end of them and kind of like the people that help make my decision for Auburn. Um, I guess I like to believe I'm that person for somebody else. Um, and so that's kind of like, I guess my most impactful favorite events kind of things I've done here at Auburn. Perfect. We have another question for you in the chat, if you see it. So it's about, can we hear the history of Nesby? How long has it been around? And how many active members do you have? And honestly, can we talk about, can we give the kind of a little history about everybody's organization, if y'all don't mind? Yes, so um, our organization here at Auburn started, so we used to believe it was 1985, but I believe that's just when we started the process. Um, we were officially chartered and um, like given the permanent student organization label in 1987. Um, I was our Nesby office, Jalen knows the office. It was, whew, the office was a mess. Um, it still kind of is, but I've been going through it recently. Um, and I went in, I was like looking, there's just like all these file cabinets. I'm just pulling them open and I opened one of them. And it's just this whole file folder that says important with three exclamation points and it's underlined twice. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting. It's probably important. And so I was like opening up reading it and it was, all of our different charter documents. Um, and it's just been like, it was so cool to like connect to that part of history um, of our organization because back in the, I don't remember what year it was, 91, 92, um, my dad was actually president of Nesby. So that was kind of like, I don't know, it was like seeing that and I found like a newsletter and it was like, here's our recent grads. And my dad was one of the recent grads and it was like these graduating seniors. And my mom was one of the graduating seniors. So it was kind of like, I guess for me, that's the fun part is like a lot of people in there, my mom and my dad have been telling stories about like, so-and-so I was ready to quit engineering. I made a C in this class and these two guys laughed at me because they failed it the first three times or whatever, you know, just kind of like the struggle of engineering. Cause you know, it, it happens. It's like that sometimes, like there's just some classes where it's just like you, everybody goes through it to get through. Um, and so just kind of like seeing their names is super awesome for me. 
So that's like the history, I guess. Um, so that's long it's been around. And right now, I active members, right now attending meetings, we have right around 60. Um, but we also have a lot of students on co-ops and different stuff like that who aren't able to attend the meetings. So I'd probably put active numbers around 75 or 80. Um, but not everybody pays dues. Um, but we, it's like, it's a great group. Um, I don't know. It's hard to track active members, like, for me, um, just because, like, some people pay dues at different rates, like, like just different things. So we're in college, and not everybody has the money at the same time. Um, but it's definitely a great group of people. Um, we have our group chat, and honestly, like, every year, the freshmen join our group chat with everybody in the chapter, and we have the argument, the same argument every year, which engineering major is the most important, and Honestly, like I'm very biased, software engineering, y'all wouldn't be able to do anything without software engineers. So that just ends that argument. But Jalen's gonna argue that industrial, you know, Jalen, he likes to say we don't do anything except for sit behind the computer and code. But that's like the whole argument. And you know, that's just the fun we like to have. Um, we have this argument all the time. It starts off with like the smallest things and then it ends up a thousand page group me notification, like a thousand notifications if you weren't paying attention. And that's just kind of like the fun we have in the organization. Uh, we can kind of joke on each other and say each other's majors aren't important. But like at the end of the day, we all know everybody's major is important in its own way. And we're there for each other. And we don't say, oh, you should change because your major's not important. It's just my major's better. It's just like your major pride, I guess, is how we like to say it. But that's kind of like our history and kind of what we do and active members and stuff like that. So I might have this number wrong. I think I saw it on a t-shirt once, but I'm pretty sure SGA started in 1922. Um, so SGA has been around for a long, 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 long time at Auburn University um, and has been super impactful in being the bridge between the student body and administrators and making sure that they're able to hear the student voice. Um, we have just about 200 mem active members in our organization, but every single student is technically a member of SGA. Um, we just have some people who are a little bit more involved than others. And so those different capacities and roles look like cabinet, our student senate, schools council, our judicial branch, elections board, elections council, um, our freshman forum, and our lobby board. So we have a lot of different teams in a lot of different areas. I promise I would not keep my head on straight without my six exec team members, um, but that is a little bit about what we do, um, and so really excited to step into this rich history of SGA this year and serve in this capacity. Yes, um, MBSU has a very, um, I guess, newer history than SGA. Um, it actually used to be called, or initially was called, the Black Student Action Committee, and it had this name around circa 1983, and then in 1984, it adopted the name that we know now, Black Student Union. And I found that very um, coincidental with the 20 year anniversary from Dr. Harold A. Franklin being on campus. Um, but BSU started off as a small group of black students that came together to unite not only black students at Auburn, but also to increase their relations with non-black students, um, as well as serving as the representative of these black students and voicing their concerns to the administrators. Um, since 1984, we've done a lot of great things on campus. Um, one is improving the cultural and campus climate um, to the state it is now, as well as growing and improving and increasing involvement amongst Black students. Um, as far as current things going on with the Black Student Union, we've done a lot of great things this past summer, uh, more recently, with increasing our relationships with Black alumni. So um, bridging that gap between not only current students, but with our alumni as well for better relations. Now, um, we've done a lot of great events, of course, over the years, a lot of good things. Um, and I would like to highlight um, which kicked off our Black History Month series of events this year, we featured Dr. Harold A. Franklin. So that was very good to have him come back to campus and actually discuss some of the things that he was thinking back in 1964, as well as giving some advice and some feedback on some things. Um, and you can kind of see how things have evolved as well as the challenges that we're still facing, but overall it was a great experience. Thank y'all. 
And we want to welcome the alumni that are just joining us. So if y'all have any questions for our student leaders, please use the chat or you can just ask them. We welcome you. So we have another, I have another question. Um, what do y'all need as student leaders from alumni? Um, I personally, right now, I would just say like the relationships. Um, our students need to be able to see somebody who's been through it, whether you are like, I know my organization is definitely centered on engineering and like it caters to engineering students, but just seeing other black students who have made it through um, and are on the other side and are doing great things. Cause when you're going through college, it's, you have those days where it's like, what even is the point of this? Like, where is this going to get me? Um, and being able to look out and, just have know there's alumni who are rooting for you who are in your corner um is kind of like I know that like motivates me um is there are all of these other people who have done this before me who they want to see me succeed just as much as I want to succeed and when I'm struggling and I forget how much I want to succeed they know that and they can push me um so I personally would just say just relationships um whether it's like structured mentorships or just like every once in a while just drop in kind of thing. Um, that's one of the things we're working on as an organization as we, is just kind of like cater or build those relationships with our alumni and kind of, um, cause I know like, I know y'all like seeing us, the alumni that we have interacted with, they love talking to us, they love seeing us, they love seeing what we're up to. And so we just want to kind of like reach out to y'all more and like actually get to know y'all more. Um, and so I guess that's short answer relationships. Yes, and I wholeheartedly echo what Adia said. Um, and a lot of that did prompt our Midsummer Mixer series um, because I wanted to increase the relationships, like she said, and build at least start somewhere and build those connections amongst our students and Black alumni. Um, because I felt like it was a disconnect somewhere um, because all of our alumni have experienced Auburn in a lens that is especially only given to them. So to have them share those experiences and kind of give things that they know now that they wish they knew back then, I think would have created better, like, okay, okay, maybe I can, I know how to navigate this challenge. So I think definitely the relationships are very important, what we need. Um, continued support as well. Um, if you're financially able, funding, because a lot of our Black students do need some scholarships and other funding opportunities given to them, but definitely it's starting with those relationships. And I have to echo that. Um, they keep taking the words right out of my mouth, but um, the relationships are key, y'all. Um, particularly for me, I've loved being able to connect with Black alumni who have been in roles in SGA before, um, particularly my role. Um, to my knowledge, there's only been four of us, and the other day I actually had the opportunity to sit down with Chief Justice Harold Melton, um, who served as the first Black SGA president. Um, and for those of you who are unaware, um, this year I'm actually the first Black female to serve in this position. So it was really incredible to get to sit down and have that conversation and talk from a first to a first um, to get that insight and that feedback about, you know, how can I be doing this job better? What should be the end of, what should be my goals and takeaways for the end of this year um, to look back on and what's going to carry me, you know, past Auburn? Um, I think having that insight, particularly for my organization, since um, Black students are particularly underrepresented in SGA traditionally, um, I think is so key. Um, and so for any alumni on the call who've been in SGA, um, any alumni who, you know, of friends who were in SGA um, during your time at Auburn, would love to find a way to connect and network between not just myself, but also the Black students who continue to serve an organization because it's important that, our, important that our voices be heard in the different spaces that SGA gets to occupy. And I think that insight would be incredibly valuable. Yes, thank you. So we have a couple questions in the chat, but before we get to Sean's questions, are there any opportunities for alumni to get involved with your organization or your events? Um, yes, for our organization on um, this semester on October 20th, we are having an alumni panel um, and so I know we at the Dean's lunch um, earlier today, Josh Jenkins and I um, and Brittany Ransom, I think she was on the call too. We got to interact with some of our engineering alum and I know we, I think we had 13 people. Brittany texted us like, we got 13 people. Um, and so just like, we just honestly, like it's one of the things where it just kind of rolls. Um, we had big plans for like mixers and stuff like that in person, but you know, COVID 
Um, so we are using the virtual platform to our advantage. So um, we're definitely going to start with like one of our general body meetings and then we hope to expand further um, and invite you all to Black Girls Rock, which will be in the spring. Um, and it's looking like we should be able to have it um, just because the, in, the number of people at events has increased. Um, so it's looking like we're going to be able to have it, but um, we'll see. Um, so but, uh, Black Girls Rock is definitely one that we love like I think that would be awesome um, just like see everybody because it's not just for engineering students or alum or people it's for absolutely everybody so um, those are like the two that are coming to mind right now so I know I already mentioned it but like I said heyday is right around the corner um, and SGA works every single year to collaborate with the alumni association to make sure that alumni are engaged in that event since as you all know um, it is definitely an Auburn favorite so be on the lookout for some communication from the alumni association about how you can get involved like I said we're still having to fine-tune some details because um, it's very difficult to get to say hey and have that interaction virtually so um, our team's been working incredibly hard to adapt that to the current guidance guidelines and everything going on with the pandemic but just be on the lookout for that and please like I said continue to stay engaged with us students in SGA. Yes and following the success of our Midsummer Mixer series this past summer um, we're implementing something new into BSU which is an alumni advisory board so um, a lot of our alums were expressing that they still wanted to continue some involvement um, with BSU in, in our endeavors on campus so um, by the brainchild of me and Aaron, <laughs> we drafted um, an alumni advisory board that will kind of serve as alums that still, you know, can give advice and feedback to our current student leaders within BSU, as well as talking about their own experiences and using that as a guide. Um, and as well, you're all welcome to attend our events. They're all virtual or mainly virtual. Um, we are doing some in-person things coming up in these um, last few months of being in the semester. But if it's virtual, you all are welcome to attend. If it's in-person and you're comfortable enough to come, um, yeah, please stop on by. You're always welcome to stop in. Thank y'all. We're gonna ask a couple questions from Sean. So his first question is for all of our panelists. How do you encourage creative thinking within your organizations? And what is the most important most important, I'm sorry, I can't read this book. And like, what is most important to your organization's mission, core, and values? Sorry. I guess I'll go. <laughs> I'll start us <this> out. <laughs> Daily. <laughs> um, okay, what was the first question? Because I was focused on the second one. Oh my. No, you're good. Um, <laughs> how do you encourage creative thinking within your organization? Yes. And it's in the chat. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Um, definitely, BSU is definitely an environment of where I would say ideal pool. Um, we have a lot of great different minds that come from either different backgrounds, different belief systems, or even different majors even. So we might have a few engineers that are going to be handling like logistical ideas. So thinking not only the overarching, but the small intricate details as well. But we might have some people in either graphic design or um, architecture is going to be thinking of the visual aspects of things. So I think each person, each student's different major and kind of backgrounds all contribute to this idea pool. But I would say definitely our cabinet meetings um, every Monday before our general assembly meetings are definitely the place where we kind of express those ideas um, because we give updates on our upcoming events. And that also gives the opportunity for anyone else in the room um, or on the call now, um, the opportunity to kind of, you know, give their own feedback, like, okay, I like this idea, I like this thing that you're going for, but we can do this, and it's, you know, it just grows the experience so much more, and really perfects the event. Now, as far as our mission, BSU's motto is unity through education, and we see that through all of our endeavors on campus and in the community. Um, BSU is a non-judgmental place. It's a safe environment. Um, like I said earlier, it definitely is a family-oriented environment. Uh, we're going to uplift you in, through your hardships, um, celebrate your successes, um, as well as create that space where you can learn, actually learn. You know, if you come in with one mindset, you're going to come in, you're going to leave with a host of different other perspectives. So creating that environment for us to all grow through educating ourselves. Um, that's mainly how we do it through our events and other general assembly meetings. 
So I'm going to answer the second question to then guide me into answering the first question. Also, by the way, thank you all for turning your cameras on. I love getting to talk to faces and not black squares. Um, but what's most important to our organization? So SGA's mission statement is to serve and promote the individual student unifying all that is Auburn. Um, and I say that because I feel as though our mission statement helps further guide our core values and our vision. Um, so I'm, I'm a big believer that that's interpreted to change every single year with every single administration. Um, but that mission statement statement um, from 1922 or whenever it was developed to on has been the core of what we do in Student Government Association and I really think that has helped guide the work that we do and um, is super integral to every single decision we make, initiative we launch, program we host. It all goes back to that mission statement and I think that applies to our creative thinking as well. You know, we are here to serve every 30,460 students that are on this campus. Um, each individual student is, you know, our job. Like We are responsible for making sure that their voice is amplified when we go to meetings with administrators and convey what the student concern is. Um, and so we've really encouraged our teams that feedback is key and feedback is crucial. Um, so we actually have a platform, it's called Auburn Answers. Um, you can actually access that that platform at aub.ie slash Auburn Answers. Um, and basically the way that works is if a student has a concern or a question or just a general comment, um, they can go on that website, submit a form, takes just about three minutes, um, and someone on our team will respond to them um, generally within 24 to 48 hours, depending on how extensive the answer is. Um, but that feedback always goes to administrators. We always try to get an answer and get back to that student as soon as possible. Um, and so we really amped up that website this year. It got a, a nice facelift and relaunched at the beginning of this semester. Um, so we're really excited about that. Now we have some different features on the website. Um, we have polling on the website which is new and it's going to be really great in helping us get that quick um, quantitative feedback but we're really really excited about the different ways in which we've been encouraging our teams to get feedback um, because that is going to be so critical as we do encourage creative thinking um, because we have so many brilliant minds on this campus and it's our job to serve them so we have to listen to them to be able to do that um, so I'll answer mine in the same order as Ada I will start with our mission statement um, the mission statement of NSBE is to increase the number of culturally responsible black engineers who excel academically, succeed professionally, and positively impact the community. Um, and so that's one of the things that I was working on our like involvement packet last year. And we kind of like to categorize all of our events in the involvement packet. And the one I'd done before, it was just kind of like, I don't know, in my brain, that was like, that's the perfect way to categorize it is the three categories, succeed professionally, positively impact the community all of that but uh, that's kind of how I've kind of grown into it that's kind of my goal this year is to try to hit all three of the pillars um, and just kind of I guess like Ada said just use it to guide us and make sure we're doing what our members need to make our members successful um, and to help them grow as much as possible so as far as like creative thinking um, I don't I don't really know so that's one of the things where it's like within engineering um, we have to think creatively outside of the box all day, every day um, in our classes. And sometimes it's like the professors are just like way over in left field and they want you to be over in way left field with them. Um, and so it's kind of one of the things where it's like a lot of the times when we come to Nesby, it's just like we want to decompress. So our thinking outside of the box, um, Langston Williams, he is a graduate student, a PhD student in aerospace engineering, and he's been on eboard the past two years. And what used to be just like game nights where we just had board games and stuff like that. Langston loves these riddles um, that all tie back into like, one was like the Fibonacci sequence. Like you don't realize that you're using, like training the muscles, like the brain muscles that you need um, for engineering, for at pretty much anything. Like those, just like the different principles like that, that go into um, pretty much everything every day kind of can relate to these different riddles and principles that he's, finds these riddles for um and so that's kind of like I guess how we kind of stretch the creative brain while also letting our members kind of decompress and not feel like they're thinking as hard um and we are very competitive like I said we argue about which majors is the best so give us something to compete about it's a screaming match pretty much every time um but that's just kind of like how we come together and we have fun and we kind of decompress so we have we like to have a couple of just fun meetings like that um, and I guess the one that's like the creative, like the artsy side of creative that is coming to mind um, is we have a couple of members who 
love doing graphic design, whether that's Photoshop. And so they are able to make our flyers. Um, and so that's super fun. So all of the flyers you see for all of our meetings, those come for, from somebody in our chapter um, who's like side gig, I guess. Fun thing to do is to make flyers. And um, paint and sip is also another one that's super fun. That's like paint and sip. We, Jalen, I think you did grape juice, you know, totally not an alcoholic, but the same principle as the alcoholic paint and sip. Um, so we have, I think we usually try to get somebody within the community, black, somebody black within the community who comes and leads um, a painting of some sort. And so that kind of stretches like the artsy side of creative and kind of like, I guess for me is the side that's not so black and white. Um, Cause as an engineer, a lot of what we do is black and white. There's not much gray, um, at least in our classes. Um, it's your answer is completely right or it's completely wrong. You may get a little partial credit here, but there's a right answer and there's a wrong answer. And so just kind of like growing the gray area mindset is I guess like the creative thinking that we like to encourage and like grow within our members and our organization. Thank y'all. So we have one more question from Sean and then we'll get to um, Shirley's question. So Sean said, what are you as student leaders doing to ensure doing doing to ensure your continued growth and development as a student leader here at Auburn? I'll be honest, I haven't felt like I've had to work that hard for that this year <laughs> between a global <laughs> pandemic and a national racial reckoning. It has been one learned lesson after the other. And I know Jalen and Adia have experienced that as well. Um, so luckily we haven't had to work too hard to grow this year. Um, but I had to do a lot, a lot of growing, of soul searching. Um, back in February, you know, I won, had the super historic win. It was incredible. Um, got so much support from a lot of you on the call. Um, a lot of friends, community members, um, had my installation banquet Sunday, March 1st, and then by, I believe it was March 8th, like that Thursday of that week, um, got the call that we were shutting down. Um, and I immediately was like, well, well, what about the Camp Regal Pep rallies? Like, what about, you know, the, the Disney trip that exec gets to go on to support Albie at the NCAA National Championship at the end of the year? Like, what about the fun things? And I kind of had to take a step back and realize, Ada, you didn't sign up to do the fun things. You signed up to serve and promote the individual student and unifile that is Auburn. And that's exactly what you're going to do. Um, so it's going to be quite a lot of work because me and my team did absolutely have to step up and do double the work. We were sending feedback constantly to administrators as we were navigating total remote learning in the spring and um, we were having to adjust how do we interview several hundred people for these cabinet positions totally online and then make selections we had to step up and make changes and be adaptable and be flexible um, in the midst of a very 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 crazy time but I think we did that and we did it in stride. And like I said, I would be nothing without those other people on my executive team because they are just absolutely phenomenal. And like I said, help me keep my head on straight. Um, but I really had to take a step back and reflect, why did you do this? You did this to serve. Um, and that's exactly what I've continued to do. So everybody's been like, oh, I'm so sorry. Your year hasn't been what you expected it to be. It's like, no, no, my, my year was to serve the student body and I'm doing just that. So I had to really change my 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 frame of mind um in that regard but definitely had to do a lot of learning and growing and adapting in this season yes this is truly um i kept saying the year of innovation and it's nothing short of that um it's a lot of adjusting adapting and being flexible like ada ruth just said um <laughs> but i would say um i wholeheartedly believe in that you're never learn never done learning and it's always room for improvement um, I've used it in myself, especially um, using the example that I spoke of earlier with leadership, um, coming into college, like with my own leadership experiences and, you know, having my own mindset of what a leadership of a leader is and does, um, but having the opportunity to break that down, actually seeing what is a leader, like breaking every piece of leadership down to the simplest form and having to build it back up and seeing, okay, the different levels of leadership, the different types of leaders. Um, it did widen my horizon as well as, you know, interacting and being around different types of leaders in different organizations. So seeing how all of these great organizations on campus are run um, similarly, because, you know, we're, we're not falling off, but 
knowing it's different things. Different things happen to SGA, different things happen in the SP, different things happen within BSU, but we're all getting the job done. So um, knowing that although things are different, they're also similar in ways, as well as, you know, always having that passion for knowledge. Um, I've never, I've never stopped learning. I learn from people at the highest level as well as the lowest level. And another thing is also pouring into people. Um, don't get so high that you forget about the people behind you because somebody one day is going to succeed you. You know, they're going to go past your accomplishments. So, um, being able to pour into them and give them knowledge just as someone did to you. Um, so the first one, I kind of have two, I would definitely say, or they kind of blend together, but the first one would be, what am I doing to ensure that I continue to grow and develop as a leader? Um, I cannot be a leader if I'm worn down, if I'm tired, if I'm not taking care of myself. Um, so that is one thing I, I've been learning this past week, um, because I did, I am at home in Montgomery right now, um, because I was not taking care of myself and I, my mental health got all crazy. Um, I was having panic attacks and just everything. And it just like, it was just everything on top of each other. Um, just, it was just a lot. So that's one thing I'm definitely learning is I don't always, it's kind of more personal, but it's like, I don't always have to, or I guess showing vulnerability. So I don't, not showing that leaders are invincible leaders, like showing that leaders do fall leaders do struggle with these things. Um, and just kind of like, making sure to just that's kind of like what kind of calms me or what not what calms me but like what I'm growing learning and growing through right now um because I was in rooms that I never really imagined I'd be in this summer um talking about tough subjects and one of the things that I've definitely learned through that was just kind of we like things aren't going to change if I or black people are talking about our experiences in ways that make other people comfortable um, and that's something I realized I was doing um, and I didn't realize it, but I kind of like flipped the switch one meeting. I was like the first meeting, um, Jalen, Ada, Sasha, Zuri were all in the meeting. We were Dr. Guge and um, all of them. And I didn't realize it, but apparently at some point I was talking about it and I said point blank period to the highest leaders of the university. Um, and I was kind of like, I didn't know it till after the fact, but Zuri and Ada had been texting each other about me saying point blank period to the administration. Um, but once that, like after the fact, like I kind of grow and learn and I was like, sometimes you just have to be vulnerable. You have to not be so careful with your words. Sometimes you have to bring the emotion. And with what happened this summer with all of the racial injustice things, you just, you had to be, you, it was kind of the point where it was like, the stoicism wasn't really getting anywhere the emotion was getting places like bring the emotion. And I guess that's kind of like one of the things that I am like growing and developing as a leader is bringing the emotion back into my leadership. Um, because it was kind of one of the things where it's like, I learned leaders don't have emotions. Leaders are very stoic. Leaders don't do this. Don't do that. But honestly, like I think showing the emotion and showing that we as leaders are doing these great things on the campus, but we still fall down. We still have rough days. Um, kind of will inspire other people to keep going and they can be a leader too because like I know some people it's like oh I can't be a leader because I struggle with blah 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 but seeing people in leadership positions who do that um who do also struggle with the same kind of things as you do kind of is like another inspiring thing so that's kind of like how I have been growing and developing as a leader like this year um in specific or in particular as well Thank you. So now we have a question from Shirley. Shirley, do you want to ask your question out loud or would you like me to read it for you? I can ask it. Okay, perfect. Hi, everyone. How are you all? It's so great to hear from you. But my question is, what has been the most surprising thing you have learned or had to overcome, overcome as a leader in your organization? Um, I will go first. Um, the disorganization of our office, of all of our records, of pretty much everything. Um, I've been, I've now like taken the office to be my office because I need a space where I can close all the doors and nobody really knows where I am because our Nesby office is in Shelby now. Um, 
on the third quadrant, which is like over towards um, the business building. So nobody really goes over there anymore. So nobody really knows I'm there. So I'm able to like get my schoolwork done with all of my classes being online. And when I'm like in class and it's like, ugh, I'm kind of bored. I just start like going in the office and just like strap, scratching through the drawers and stuff. And just kind of like the stuff that I found, like I found label makers, I found cameras, I found a whole desktop computer just like in a drawer in the office. Um, so just kind of like, and I'm a very organized person, the disorganization, it was driving me crazy. Um, so just kind of like, that's like one of the things that I've learned and I'm working to overcome right now is just kind of like get things more organized, get a better history, get better contact information because we have all these great alumni who want to connect with us and we connect with them one or two times and then their contact information gets lost when the administration is changed, um, when the new set, the new e-board comes in. So finding a way to kind of continue what each e-board does um, and that's kind of like what I'm working on and trying to overcome is because I know like Ms. Shirley, you've been at meetings, like everybody's been at meetings, but like your contact information gets lost right after the fact, or our list of company contacts to come to our meetings, that doesn't go from one year to the next. Um, and so I guess just like mine is definitely the record keeping um, as part of like overcoming as leader of my organization. And that's one of the things that I hope to like fine tune and work all the kinks out so that the next e-board doesn't have this trouble um, and I know that's kind of like continuing off last year so last year we had a bunch of different hoop laws um, we couldn't get development to tell us the right amount of money in our Auburn account um, and at one point we were planning to go to FRC and thought we had like $50 um, as a whole organization so those kind of things our account numbers weren't being kept up with um, so like I think it's called the FOPE numbers um, for Auburn University those aren't being kept up with so we were having to email and they were looking up a random number that wasn't really Nesby. Um, so just different small things like that. Um, Cause I know that that was the most stressful week and a half when we thought we had like $50 to our whole organization and we're trying to get to Tampa, Florida. Um, so, and then get ready to go to San Antonio the next semester. So it was just like small things like that, that caused hiccups um, last year. And we're kind of trying to fine tune and not have them happen again. So I would know, this is a long way of saying just records and organization. Yes. And um, I don't know if I was just naive, blind to the fact, or just trusted people um, just a little too much. But um, one thing that kind of uproared last year with MBSU was um, everyone did not have the same dedication level um, as everyone else. So I just found myself week after week just pouring my heart out to our academy members like, you know, this is, you know, this is a black student union. Like we represent black students. What are you not getting? And they were just looking at me like I was crazy. And um, at one point I almost cried. And I was just like, I know I am not about to cry in this meeting. He cried, y'all. He was bawling his eyes out, y'all. <laughs> so I really did have to take a step back and really like, okay, reprocess things because maybe maybe they're not less dedicated but we're going to meet people where they are with their capabilities and um in fact like we have a lot of different leadership levels within bsu some have more experiences than others some don't and i guess it was kind of hard to grasp that at first but um once a year kind of rolled through and i kind of started taking a step back and not um, being so emotional, I was seeing those things. So it was kind of giving me the opportunity to, I guess, look at things through a different lens, but as well as encouraging um, people with less leadership experiences to get more involved, not only within BSU, but around campus. And a lot of our students that was in BSU last year with those um, not so much leadership experiences are now uh, they're gaining so much now. We have some that are RAs, some that are student recruiters, some that have taken on other leadership uh, roles in other organizations. So I think with that stepping back and kind of reevaluating things, it kind of promoted, you know, some great experiences and great um, skill sets. But you all, I was just like, I know um, it's not that many of us. So I know something, something's got to be up. But yes, ooh. Yes. 
So Adia and Jalen answered this from a more organizational standpoint, and I'm going to answer it from a little bit more of a personal standpoint, if that's okay. Um, I think the thing that was most surprising to me, and this is going to sound really, really sad when I say it, is that I'm capable. Like, I, I truly didn't believe that I was capable of doing the job that I'm doing today, right? Because no one that looked like me has done this. And y'all, let me tell y'all, it is really, really hard being a first. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have ever been a first in any of the capacities that you've served in, but it is really, really, really hard to be a first because you set the standard for everybody that's to come after you. Um, but I stepped into this like so pessimistic. I was like, are people even gonna show up for me? Like, are people gonna support me? Like, I didn't even know if I was capable of doing this job. But again and again and again, I heard like, are you kidding? like you're Ada Ruth Huntley which like I don't I don't think that there, there's any like you know what I'm saying but <laughs> we were like you know you're Ada Ruth Huntley like you can tackle anything like you've done all these leadership roles and been involved in all these spaces like what are you thinking like you can do this and I consistently 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 doubted myself and I was like I don't know if Auburn's ready for a black female I don't know if they're ready for me like I just I just don't know about this but continually I had an incredible support system that encouraged me picked me up when I was down like made sure that I saw this process all the way through because there were a lot of times that I wanted to give up and um there were a lot of times now uh, where I'm in this job I'm like this is really hard y'all and I just want to take a nap um but once again like that tribe and a lot of those people are from that freshman forum group that I'm talking about have picked me up when I'm down, um, dusted me back off and said, get back out there, you got this. Um, and so just learning to believe in myself um, has been kind of my biggest takeaway and this experience in particular, but in my leadership at Auburn, because I've been able to accomplish some really cool things. And I don't say that to brag, I say that as a testament to the people that have poured into me. Um, and so I, I think that's probably been the most surprising thing for me to learn is that yes, Ada, like you are capable and you can do it well. Thank you. all So can I say something after that? Um, yes, go ahead. <laughs> so Ada, I, I just want to commend you for saying that. Um, I, gosh, I look awful here. I don't know what, what kind of light I have. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I know I, I really just want to commend you for saying that because I think it's so important. You know, oftentimes, I mean, I'm listening to all of you wonderful leaders and you are, you're all leaders. And, you know, I think sometimes, and no matter where you get in your career, we, we are often our, our worst critic, right? And, and we have to learn how to get past that. And if you guys can do that now, you know, at this point in your life, oh, wow, what can you guys accomplish, right? So, you know, the, the thing that I always try to encourage and that I always try to pass on to you know, uh, those who are younger in their career and, you know, and even some of us that are later in our career is own your role, right? Own the role that you're in. You earned it, you're there, step into it and don't doubt yourself because most likely you will find that you do belong where you are and you're capable. And how many times, you know, do we, many of us get in the room where we look around and we don't see people who look like us. But, but we get there and then after a while, we're like, well, wait a minute, I could be the smartest person in this room, you know? And I'm, I'm saying that because it does happen, but more so than that, you own your role and you step into it and don't go in there putting the doubt on yourself. So, I mean, I just, I just loved hearing you, you know, say that. And I think it's just such an important point that uh, was, was, I just had to say something, so. <laughs> So Charlene, I was I was going to say something because all three of those answers, I, I would say it we've all felt them. You know, I've been out of Auburn almost 30 years. And even, you know, this year, I've had to deal with teams that weren't organized. I've had to deal with uh people not pulling their weight um either on a committee or uh, on a team. And at times, at self-doubt, when you get a new role, you have to question, do I deserve it? And do I have the skills? And just like Ada Ruth, you have to talk to yourself and say, hey, I'm here, I've, I've done this before, I'm prepared. And so all those things, I think, as Charlene said, that you're learning them at your age and, and um, that you're still in school is commendable. And so I appreciate you all sharing that with everyone. And I'm so proud of you guys. Thank you. So for our last question, I know um, 
some of some of y'all already touched on this, but how are y'all balancing your work life balance essentially doing your organization full time and also during school full time? So do y'all want to talk about your work life balance and how do you take care of your mental health? That is a loaded question. Um it has definitely been a learning process and you know i thought i had a system down and then the pandemic hit and it's like oh my goodness everything has changed as soon as i've got a, a system going that works um go figure um so for me it really looks like separating work um from school, from life. Um, and so I would like show my camera and show y'all, but it's kind of messy in here. Um, I've developed what is a, called a clawfist. <laughs> so it's say office in my closet, but it was really crucial for me since I had the space this year to separate a workspace and a school space from my hangout space. Um, because I just, I needed that mental separation. Normally I'd go on campus or I'd be in my office and I'm still there every now and it every now and then but you know with the pandemic wanting to be more conscientious doing a lot of work from home like i felt like that was incredibly important for me to separate those two spaces um so when i go in my room and i lay in my bed like it's it's time to lounge um additionally i have so many planners um so i have my outlook calendar which i live by my friends crack up i'll make a coffee date with somebody and then they'll get an outlook invite from me two minutes later um because if it's not on the outlook calendar it just does not happen but additionally and for the students on the call um and jalen and Adi, i don't know if y'all know about this tool there's a website called mystudylife.com um it's free you can download an app um and literally at the beginning of every single semester i take my syllabi i sit down i plug in all of my due dates my exam dates my class times um and it uploads them for me and has a dashboard it's like okay this is due today this is due tomorrow this is due this week you have this coming next week um so that i don't even have to think about it right because if i was trying to juggle all this stuff in real time my life would quite literally fall apart. Um, so that's been really important, but also just taking time for myself. Um, I set a very, very strict standard from the beginning with my advisors um, and Corey's on this call, so he can attest to this. Like after business hours, I'm out. Like unless it's an emergency between the hours of 5 p.m. to 8 a.m., you will not get an email from me. Um, which traditionally in this role, and a lot of my executive team members still practice this, it is like if I get an email, I'm going to respond right then and there, schedule it, it's going to go. I'm like, no, like I have to create a work life balance. And if I hadn't done that, um, I'd be working all day. And y'all, that is exhausting and it's tolling. And I'm still a student too, um, and still have a life too. So I think, you know, creating that work life balance has been incredibly important for me and I've done that through a wide variety of those things plus I also like Adia struggle with mental health so it's all the more important for me to make sure that I take time for myself and I you know treat myself and make sure that I'm okay as well um so I guess I'll go with the same like piggyback off Ada I definitely had a system um I was it was I was definitely one of those that had to mentally and physically separate um school from just sleeping um because freshman year when my desk where I did my homework was right next to the bed, I would not never, I'd call myself relaxing, but I'd be sitting at the desk still kind of subconsciously working on stuff. And that bit me in the behind. Um, I, freshman year, I had basically a mental breakdown, not terribly, but more or less where I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm leaving Auburn, whatever. I not cut out to be an engineer. I'm not cut out to be at Auburn, but it was really, I just, I wasn't sleeping well. I, my brain was never shutting down. Um, so last year I worked super hard on setting boundaries. So when I was on campus, I was doing involvement. I was doing schoolwork. So I get to campus because um, I'm one of those that goes to bed super early and wakes up super early. So I would be on campus at seven o'clock in the morning from seven o'clock to lunchtime would be school after lunch. Then that's when I do involvement after I leave campus and it's at home and the backpack doesn't open except for to plug up the computer and the iPad. Um, and the phone is there, but it's really just Snapchat and social media and all of that. So that was like my system and it was working really well and I was thriving mentally and physically and just everything was going well. And then COVID and it was like, go home and don't leave your house. And I had finally trained my brain that the house is when I relax. Um, and it took so long to train my brain to relax at home that the unreal, the, now I got to work at home, never exactly clicked on last semester. Um, and it still hasn't exactly clicked. So that's why I've been going to the Nesby office, which is just like, it's basically a supply closet, um, with two desks in there. And I just kind of can go in there and be away from the world and just kind of like get my schoolwork done. 
Um, and so I can still preserve my house or my apartment as my relaxing place, the time where I just like sit and do nothing, lounge around, binge whatever shows on, go hog wild on the reality TV because I'm obsessed with reality TV. It's like my guilty pleasure is reality TV and it's the trashier, the better sometimes like, you know, you just got to do what you got to do to kind of <laughs> like, just kind of, you just got to do it sometimes. Um, and it's just a way to just like turn my brain off and not really have to think. Um, so that's like what I reserve my house for. Um, and one thing that I kind of like, um, what I would do, I realized that I hadn't done it this semester when I was like super stressed out and I was having panic attacks is I usually have just some random day in the semester where I just say it's a mental health day and I don't go to class. I don't do homework. I just kind of, I just be, um, and it's like, and fall break is usually a perfect time where to just be, but I also have at least one mental health day, depending on how my semester is going, where I just don't really open just the backpacks there, but nothing is taken out of it. Um, and so I just call that like my mental health day. And it's just a day where, I'm just like Adia. I'm not Adia the Nesby on a Nesby deck. I'm not Adia who works in K-12 outreach. I'm not Adia the ambassador for AEP. I'm Adia who's going to sit on the couch and watch reality TV. So that's just kind of like, that's one of the ways that I try to focus on myself. Um, and I realized that I hadn't done it because I was like, oh, I'm at home. Um, I've been relaxing more than usual, whatever, but I was never really turning my brain off. Um, and like, that's kind of the analogy I use is like turning my brain off, which is just all of the things going through my head, whether it's organizations, my classes, what am I, what am I going to do when I graduate in a year and a half? You know, just the millions of things that run through my mind. Um, I was never turning those off. Um, and so that's kind of one of the things that like I had to focus on is turning off everything, like all of the worries and all of the future things and just focus on like now and just not doing something sometimes. Um, it's perfectly fine to take breaks. I have to like give myself grace um, for taking breaks and resting. Um, Cause I'm one of those, it's like, if I'm resting, I'm not doing X, Y, Z. So I have to, I had to change that mindset. If I'm resting, I'm doing X, Y, Z, which is focusing on myself as opposed to not doing X, Y, Z, which is all of my other commitments. Yes, and I wish I did not copy and paste what Adia and Ada Ruth just said, but um, I definitely agree with them with um, when they said, like, I guess they were saying, um, they spread themselves too thin because I do the same, um, especially coming from high school, being so involved and heavily involved there, and copying that and bringing it right onto Auburn, um, I did kind of lose myself as the person and not the involved student or the leader. Um, there'll be a lot of times it would just be a weekend. We'd be at Walmart. I'm here. I am talking about, did you submit that form for the event? You didn't. Okay. Well, you need to submit it by this date, this time. So I was just consumed by involvement. I love involvement guys, but it was just getting to a point where I was like, okay, maybe I need to take a break. Um, now, I do think the pandemic has introduced some new challenges because normally, you know, we could have face to face interaction on a daily basis where it wouldn't be so exciting to see somebody now. Um, but now I think we have to find new ways to keep everyone excited and engaged. Um, and that was a, a very big challenge this summer, especially with having to not only interview new applicants, but bringing an entire new cabinet into BSU, having them acclimated to our organization standards, as well as actually planning events for we have no clue how the future is going to look at that time. So I think a lot of things did go through my mind, but mental health is definitely one of the biggest, one of the biggest things in my life that I preach. I always tell the people, you know, there are four areas um, within your life. You have involvement, education, social life, and personal. Um, somehow my involvement always triumphs the education. I don't know how. Um, my friends have said I'm getting a bachelor's degree, not in industrial engineering, but in involvement. Um, and I, you know what? I just laugh at it because they might be true. <laughs> but honestly, 
I really do tell my members because I know it's hard. It's very challenging, especially with so much happening all at once. Whew, you just need to breathe a break. So I tell them, you know, take a me day, take a couple me days, maybe take you a me week. But when we get to like, yes, I need two me weeks. Okay, maybe you don't need a me week anymore. You don't need that anymore. So knowing how to balance everything as well as still taking care of yourself is one of the biggest things that I've had to come to terms with. Um, so one of the things that I have started doing this year is after four o'clock on Friday, you will not begin to email from me until probably about Sunday. And even then, I'm not expecting you to do anything with that till Monday. So it's going to get sent Sunday, but you ain't got to do nothing with that till Monday. Um, I'm enjoying my weekends. I'm enjoying myself. Um, but really, guys, just making sure that you're keeping yourself at the forefront. Yes, your education is important. Don't get, don't misquote me, but also remembering why you're here as a person. Um, yes, it is to get this education. Yes, it's to get a great career, but also realizing that you have to live beyond this. Um, and you won't be known as such and such with this degree. You're going to be known as your name. Um, so always keep that in mind. Well, thank y'all. Well, for the sake of time, we're going to wrap it up, but we want to thank our student leaders for this panel and all of your wisdom. If y'all would like to, to drop your information in the chat so the alumni can reach out to you to give you any words of advice or encouragement, y'all want to put your emails in the chat for us. That'd be really lo lovely. And then Erin, you want to give us our last announcement? Yes, and again, thank you panelists for all of those words and all that you do as student leaders. I know that's um, a job on top of being a student and we really appreciate um, you coming tonight and spending that time with us to share um, about what you're doing and what you're, you're going through, but how you're also overcoming and continuing to be successful. Um, alumni and friends, thank you so much for attending tonight and our many events throughout the week. Um, tomorrow, October 1st, Thursday, we've got an 1856 speaker series, which will um, feature Kenneth Reese. He is an Auburn freshman and the first Black state ambassador and president of Alabama 4-H. So that's super exciting. It's going to be on Facebook Live on the Auburn Alumni Association Facebook page. Um, and so don't miss that at 11.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Um, following that, at noon, we'll have a lunch and learn. Um, it'll be anti-blackness and mental health with Chantal Pace. Um, she's a 2011 grad of Auburn. She's a therapist and a doctoral student at the University of Georgia. And Gary Morgan, who's a special assistant of inclusion diversity um, for the Office of Inclusion and Diversity here at Auburn. Um, and so they're just going to be talking about racial trauma and things that folks are dealing with, especially during this time. Um, so that'll be a great event. And then finally ending the night with an alumni panel at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, we have some esteemed panelists moderated by Regina Sanders, who is the president of the Auburn Alumni Association Board of Directors. Um, she is the first black female president and first black president of the Board of Auburn, you know, Auburn Alumni Association Board of Directors. Um, so a panelist, one of our panelists is on here tonight, Shirley Balware. Hey, Shirley. And Shirley will be joining them, um, Julius Hammond, Jasmine Carr, Jacoby Burns Johnson, and Ronnie Brown. Um, so please join us tomorrow for all of these wonderful events. And thank you for- Jacoby's on here too. Oh, Jacoby, hey, Jacoby. <laughs> Jacoby's on here as well. And they're both gonna be on, uh, wave y'all. <laughs> and they're gonna, uh, offer some great advice to our current students and so we're very very excited about that our students have really been putting that event um, and so please 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 come and join us uh, tomorrow night and for all of those events and then on Friday we have our uh, virtual award ceremony featuring um, Charlene is on the call she is an award recipient this year so be sure to watch the um, award ceremony uh, on Friday night but that's all the announcements I have for tonight. And thank you again for joining us again. Thank you to our panelists and y'all have a good night and war eagle.